Hello, everyone. My name is Cooper Kidd, and I use they, them pronouns. I'm a non-binary transracial adoptee of Korean descent who is also disabled. I'm here today to talk about navigating cis-normative tech spaces as a non-binary person of color based on my own experiences. There will be time for questions at the end of this talk, and I hope that this talk helps you in some way. So let's begin. Here's a little bit more information about me. For visual access, I'm wearing a white button down shirt with a suit jacket on top. I'm also wearing headphones that are black and have a light brown complexion with dark brown eyes and black hair. I hold a master's in information management from the University of Maryland College Park, which is located outside Washington, DC. I grew up in the DC area and have lived many places, including the Bay Area, North Jersey, and currently live in Philadelphia. I currently work for Barclays Bank as a technology analyst and have a background working in healthcare and higher education with mostly LGBTQ plus identified individuals. My background with LGBTQ plus work informs how I approach my work and my identity influences how I navigate all aspects of my life. I also think it is imperative to acknowledge my privilege when having conversations because we cannot have a talk with me as a speaker without me acknowledging my privilege. I'm a light-skinned East Asian person with a master's degree from a well-known university in the United States. I'm also a United States citizen, which makes it easier for me to get a job as I do not require sponsorship. I also have financial backup and support, which means I have agency to choose a job that is well-suited for me versus any job that comes along. These are just some points of privilege that I have that I want to acknowledge so you can understand where I come from and you can maybe have a better understanding of how I operate and why I made some of the decisions I did. I also believe that acknowledging privilege helps us to better build community and strengthen relationships. As stated previously, I work at Barclays Bank, which is a multinational universal bank based in London in the UK. I am a technology analyst, which means that I work in the technology sector at Barclays in a variety of roles. Investment banking has historically been very male dominated, which can make it hard for any person who is not male to thrive. My role is sort of unique in that I am in a two-year program where I rotate through different sectors of the bank. In my role, I've been on three different teams working on projects like large-scale moves of tech equipment, creating dashboards that showcase when different trading applications stop working, and I'm currently working within the chief data office where I work on projects related to records management. Barclays was in many ways my first official foray into the tech world. While I held internships and did work during my master's degree program, I was not as immersed in the tech world as I have been at Barclays. And coming from spaces where my work in many ways revolved around my identity as a non-binary queer person, it was a bit shocking to work in an area where my identity is not at the forefront of my work. Moreover, it was odd to be in a space where my identity as a person of color was not something that was ever discussed. However, I will say that I have found doing work where my identities are not at the forefront to be liberating in ways I never anticipated. It can be exhausting to do work where your identity is so intrinsically intertwined, and doing work in the tech space has become a welcome relief for the time being. However, my identity, background, and access did help me enter the tech world, and you too can likely use your identities to your advantage. Many companies like Barclays are actively trying to diversify their workforces, which means that they're often actively seeking for historically underrepresented folks in tech such as non-binary people and people of color. In fact, I applied to work at Barclays during the second fall of my master's program at a conference called Grace Hopper, which is a conference for women and non-binary technologists. Barclays was there actively recruiting, and while I did not feel super qualified for the role, I applied anyways and received an offer. I once heard a statistic about how cis white men often apply for roles they're not qualified for. So if they can do it, so can you. As a mentor once told me, Aim to have as much confidence as a cis white man. This advice has greatly helped me feel confident to do what I need and push me forward throughout my career. I will also say that most things can be used as a strength, which for me includes using my identity as a strength. I have found that having to work harder than some of my peers has made it so that I'm more determined to succeed. I'm also sometimes better able to come up with novel strategies because my background has made it so that certain things are not just handed to me, and I have to use out-of-the-box thinking to find solutions to problems, such as how to call out and in a coworker who does not use my correct pronouns or a coworker who has said some racist things. 
that many of my white or cisgender coworkers do not have to. Using out of the box thinking is a huge asset in the tech space where disruptions to the status quo mean more gets done and often better. You can succeed and I hope that you do. When I interviewed at Barclays, I was very upfront about my identity. I have a personal website that is listed on my resume that has my pronouns on it. My pronouns are also on my resume. It is also harder for me to hide my identity as much of my previous work is with the LGBTQ plus community and people make assumptions even if they do not mean to and having a lot of work with the LGBTQ plus community can lead people to assume that you are part of that community regardless of if it is true or not. However, you may want to not disclose at the interview if you are worried that it will negatively impact you. On the flip side of that though, is that you may not be able to tell how friendly a company will be towards non-binary and LGBTQ plus people, something that you can sometimes tell at an interview. During the interview, it is important to also remember that you are interviewing them. You can ask questions about LGBTQ plus protections, affinity groups, and support to learn more about the company. They may not tell you, but sometimes you can get a vibe, which can be very useful. You can also use your network or Reddit or other listings to learn about the company's approaches to LGBTQ plus and trans people, as well as people of color's experience of the company. Websites like Glassdoor and Fishbowl can be very telling too. Using your network or the internet or both to learn more is something that I cannot emphasize enough. When I started at Barclays, I knew that they had been lauded for their diversity initiatives and workforce inclusion, which was appealing to me. I wanted to work somewhere where I knew that I would be able to be myself in the workplace and not have to fight to feel that way. Many companies are moving in this direction too, which makes it a little easier to find a workspace as a non-binary person. You can often find if companies have been awarded for their diversity initiatives as well, as what they are doing to increase diversity. The Human Rights Campaign, or as is more commonly known, the HRC, for instance, has ranked companies based on their policies for LGBTQ plus employees, and this guide is accessible on their website for free. There are many other such listings too that can help you determine if a company is a potential good fit for you as well. And these are easily found with a quick Google search. While these listings are not going to tell you everything, they are a good place to start. You can also use these listings and online sites to learn more about companies' policies around many other things that may be useful for you, such as their policies for disabled employees, for instance. I cannot state how helpful searching for these items was before I accepted the offer from Barclays. These are also good ways to look into initiatives for race-related topics at work too, which is vital to navigating the tech world because it is harder as a person of color and you do not want it to be harder than it has to be. As a trans person who is also disabled, I also found that it was important to look into healthcare coverage before accepting a job because I wanted my care to be covered by my insurance. To do this, I had the recruiter I worked with email me the healthcare and policies for the cover for other coverage offered by Barclays, as well as information on short-term disability and other things I thought were important. It is important to look at all angles before taking a job. We are all extremely capable people with a lot of potential, and we need to look out for ourselves and each other. Lifting people up is a great way to live. After I found out more about Barclays and decided that I was going to take a job with them, I knew I needed to figure out how to navigate Barclays as a trans person of color who is also disabled. I know that transphobia and bias exist in all spaces, and I wanted to be as prepared as possible. I also want you to be as prepared as possible, which is why I decided to do this talk. And, is important, and it is important to note that tech spaces are not the only spaces that are cis normative either. In fact, most spaces are, but there are great ways to navigate these spaces, which I will delve into here. However, this is not to say that I have not had some troubles. Some of my coworkers struggle with pronouns, for instance, and I've had to gently remind them of my pronouns by having conversations with them. I also make sure to put my pronouns in my email, and they are visible when people message me in Teams because they are on a status message. I try to make it as easy for others to see my pronouns and be reminded of them as possible, as this helps both them and me. I've also faced racism and hardship in the workplace from people telling me that I speak good English for someone from China, when in reality, I'm not even from China or Chinese, and trying to connect me with coworkers based simply on our race and gender identity, which, while nice in thought, can come across as a bit problematic. While these circumstances have and certainly do happen, I think it is important to also focus on actual ways to navigate these spaces, which has included these events. 
In fact, part of dealing with these events was made easier by having an external network of people I could turn to for help and guidance in these situations. One of the most valuable ways I have navigated cis-normative workspaces as a disabled queer person of color was to have an external network of folks that I can turn to for support. Having an external support network has been an imperative aspect in many aspects of my life, not just here. I just had surgery, for instance, and this network was so incredibly supportive in helping me with that as well. An external support network can be helpful in work situations because your friends and mentors who are not involved with your work can provide support that your coworkers may be unable to provide. You can also discuss things with them you may not want to discuss with people you work with, which can be very helpful. I've relied on my external support network to vent, ask for support, and brainstorm solutions with, which has been very helpful. Now I know that it can be hard to build an external support network. The main way that I have found to build community is by joining local groups for people of similar identities and lifestyles. Moreover, I have found sometimes the best people to talk to are the people who do not work in tech and who are white and not trans. Another important way I have found to navigate cis-normative workspaces is to build a community and get involved at work. I am really involved with certain initiatives at work, such as with the Early Careers Working Group, which has helped me build community with colleagues my own age. I have also been involved with the LGBTQ plus working group, where I've met other colleagues, including some who share being both non-binary and non-white. Building a network of people I can rely on and share with at work has been really helpful in helping me learn many of the skills I'm talking about here today. It can also be really helpful to have mentors who work with and garner ideas from to help me make my workplace a better one for myself and others. My mentors have taught me how to push back against this normativity, such as by including my pronouns and my status on teams, feeling comfortable introducing myself with my pronouns and standing up for myself. And now when microaggressions, bias or discrimination show up at work, I'm better able to ask for help dealing with it from others above me or saying that those things are not okay. Having a community at work is incredibly important and helpful, especially as someone who the workplace is not often made for. While it is not your responsibility, it can be helpful for your colleagues to be educated on issues facing people of color and trans folks. It can also help them to learn about bias and microaggressions. These can be great topics to bring to your workplace for further training for your colleagues and educational opportunities that you can help with if you so choose and want to. It can be important for your colleagues to see trans and people of color take charge and stand up. More non-binary trans people of color are needed in leadership roles in tech, because if technology is going to be truly made for everyone, everyone must be included, which means leadership must be as diverse as the people who the products are meant to serve, which should be everyone and not just a select few. And let's not forget about self-care and the importance of taking care of yourself. The world is very hard, especially right now, and it is important to take a break, sleep, eat, relax, spend time with friends, do what you do, do what you need to do to thrive and not just survive. Being a non-binary person of color in tech can be exhausting, but it can also be really rewarding. I hope that we can work to create more equitable, inclusive spaces for everyone. And now I want to take time to answer questions from you. Feel free to ask anything on your mind, and if I can answer it, I will. I have deliberately left plenty of time for questions because I know that I could not have possibly covered or thought of everything either. I also think it is important at gatherings like this to take care of yourself, and if that means leaving now, I will not take offense. I also aim to end a little early so that you will have some time to regroup before the next session. So now we can pause the recording and I will answer questions live. Thank you for coming to my talk. I hope it was helpful and that you were able to take away something. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I can be reached via this email on the screen, cooper.lee.kid at gmail.com, kid is spelled two Ds, or you can reach out to me on LinkedIn or social media, and my website is listed here as well, cooperleekid.com. Again, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm here to help in any way that I can, and thank you again for coming, and I hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of this conference. Thank you.